All right, everybody. It is the second day after the three layers have been effectively epoxied together. Took off the clamps. Around the time it started kicking off, you could tell because the bond on the clamps were getting kind of questionable in terms of am I going to be able to remove these clamps if I leave them on any longer. So you'll kind of be able to gauge that as this epoxy starts to dry. So that is something, it left a little bit of divot right there where the clamps were, but no big deal. We're actually gonna uh, sand this down a little bit. You can see there's quite the reflection on it. It came out really nice. One of the things I was kind of worried about is taking those clamps off and making sure it had a good bond between these surfaces here, but it actually came out pretty pretty good. Like I said earlier, it does have a little bit of a, a glossy finish to it, which I'm going to sand down as we apply the Kevlar on top of this. And one of the things that I did as I was taking the clamps off was I wanted to make sure we had a really good bond along this section right here, because this is kind of where the center is. This is where we're going to be cutting out where the bowling pin goes. So I wanted to make sure we didn't have any kind of gaps and basically I had enough clamping power with those C-clamps and yeah, looks good. The other thing to, to note here on the surface of the epoxy is certain types of epoxies have what's called blushing afterwards. It's a waxy layer. It's, it's created as a result of heat. And I noticed on this one, really good quality epoxy. It didn't didn't really have any of that throughout. So I'm still gonna go ahead and sand it and then clean it off really good afterwards. But it was just something to note with the products from US Composites. It actually came out really nice. So one of the things to mention here, as I as I said earlier, is you you can't now that we're gonna put the Kevlar on top of it, you can't just coat the Kevlar on top of this surface once it's kind of cured which you can do the the sticky test if you do this and it makes a sticky feel you're probably in a, a better shape to, to start recoating it but once it's actually hard like it is here you actually have to sand it down if you don't you're gonna have some issues so a lot of people they do recommend doing it like I did here and then going hitting it with some sand uh, paper and then cleaning it real good getting the wax out and then recoating it with the uh, Kevlar or fiberglass, depending on what you're using. It, it will have a better, uh, they say like a molecular bond. That's what I was reading about. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the surface down a little bit so we can prep for the Kevlar being put down on this. But it looks pretty good so far. I figured you'd all want to see this. This is kind of the first shot of the Kevlar as a whole. Roughly 25 yards here. This is 5 ounce. And it doesn't feel super thick. It's somewhat... You can kind of see through it here and there. But not really. But it's really nice. Nice material. And apparently it's not supposed to be itchy either. But we've got plenty of it to go around. We're actually going to be buying a lot more as we're putting the boat together, but I'm really um, excited to see how this Kevlar goes down versus using traditional chop strand, uh, chop mat, and 1708 and things like that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to need to be successful in this next little endeavor here. And... First and foremost, what I recommend is probably 80 grit sandpaper on like a little mouth sander like this. Your trusty grinder with your 80 grit uh, sanding wheel, you'll need that as well. And this is what you're looking for as you're grinding uh, this surface. Not not the, uh, the radius, but you want this haze look. And then you'll see I need to do a little bit more. I just, I just did this by hand so you could see for the video what you're trying to achieve and it'll stick to that it won't really stick to this bonding surface like that so you'll need to try your best to just get it down to that 
as always you want to make sure you have the appropriate amount of safety equipment and anytime the rule of thumb is when do you when do you think you're going to need to use your uh, paint suit is when you're using the grinder definitely wear your paint suit if you're just using a little mouse grinder uh, grinder or sander probably don't need it all right so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to use this little sander first and foremost and sand this surface down and then we'll we'll talk about when we go to the grinder next all right let's get this mask off here so you can see here I started off with some 80 grit and then I said you know what this material this epoxy is hard enough let's switch over to some 40 so I started moving over to 40 and then I touched it up afterwards again with some 40 grit came out really nice and smooth it does take a little bit of work hopefully you're not in the same boat I am and you have to sand this off because normally you shouldn't have to the only reason I'm sanding this is because I made a mistake with coating it and in your application you should not have to sand it but what you will have to do is put a radius on the edge so you can fold over the Kevlar or if you're using epoxy uh, and fiberglass you'll have to create a radius let me show you what that looks like okay so you can see we've got the edge and the Kevlar or fiberglass doesn't like to roll over 90 degree turns so what we have to do is actually create like a little radius around here it's just a smooth edge so it's not so sharp and what I'll do for this part is I'm actually going to grind this off so it has a little bit of a turn and then I'm also going to grind in this area to make sure this is nice and flat too and then obviously uh, put a little radius on the bottom as well so it'll have kind of a, a smooth edge and we'll do that all the way down and like I said the the importance of that is so when we lay the Kevlar or fiberglass in your case you'll be able to not have to worry about it having this uh, gap right here you'll see what will happen if you do try to run it on a 90 it'll uh, kind of like bubble up right here you'll get some air pockets in there and it, it won't it won't seal as well so do yourself a favor and just create that radius so anyway so I'll go ahead and get suited up put my mask on and we'll go ahead and start grinding that edge up a little bit there. Okay. So, all done. All the edges along the side of this transom are now even. And it, it's kind of neat. So last time I did this, I used PL Marine. This time, as you saw, I use the epoxy. Take a look at this. It's kind of neat. We'll see if we can get it to focus. But it actually, in some spots, looks like it's all one piece of marine grade plywood. Really neat. Especially like in this area where the bowling pin is. It looks like it adhered just right. And that was the thing here. We want to make sure it's nice and smooth so when we roll that Kevlar over top here, you can also see, like I said earlier, the, the radius. So basically what it'll do is it'll make a, a nice little bend. Won't have any problem sticking to it. It came out real nice. Take a look down here. You can see it looks just like one long piece. So, pretty happy with it so far. You see along the edges. Smoothed over the edges real good. Going into the corners as well. Make sure everything was nice and smooth. So to finish this off, before we apply the actual Kevlar itself, we're going to flip it around and create the edge on that side as well. And then from there, we should be just about ready to rock and roll. You can see on this side, there's obviously no epoxy on it other than a little bit around the edges.
So what I'll do is, as I'm cutting the radius, I'll sand off these little high spots, the, the drip spots. We won't have to worry about this edge. So if you're doing this yourself, this is what your side should look like initially. No oopsie mistakes on it, meaning no, no epoxy. So that last little exercise you saw me go through, you shouldn't have to worry about that. But the radius and grinding off these edges, you definitely need to do that so you don't have any high spots. All right, so anyway. All right. See my wax remover there. You can see we're gonna be moving to the next step here real quick. So anyway, we got both, both the top and bottom sides with the radius on it. Looking good. Let's go ahead now and remove any kind of wax that was left over from when we were sanding. Most, mostly going to be found on the other side. This is the side that didn't have the epoxy coated on it. So I'll go ahead and hit it with some of this wax remover and we can get started with the Kevlar application. Got all the wax removed off of it. Left us with a nice little haze, which is what we're looking for. We are officially ready to get some Kevlar attached to this. I hope you're as excited as I am, because I'm ready to get this thing in the boat already. So let's go measure out some Kevlar and put this on. There you go, everybody. Take a look. I think it looks really neat. I got enough laid up where I can wrap it underneath. I'm likely would, um, going to trim some of this off here as well along the sides so as I wrap it I don't have all this excess. But that's what it looks like so far. I'll go ahead and trim it up a little bit so we get this applied and make it look right. All right, so you can see I've trimmed the excess off along the edges. Made sure I cut the corners here. Kind of have to do that. Otherwise the Kevlar won't be able to make the turn properly. Keep in mind I did use a different type of scissors. They say these are the uh, type of scissors you're supposed to use when you are cutting Kevlar. So anyway, what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some epoxy and get starting with the application process of applying it on here. I'm, I'm only going to apply one side at a time and then we'll flip it over after it dries and we'll go through and apply epoxy to the other side. So depending on how long that takes, maybe I, may, I might be able to get to it today. Hopefully. We'll see what happens. So without further ado, let's get started here with the uh, epoxy part. All right, everybody, here you go. I was gonna do some more video as I was rolling it and mixing it and things like that, but the problem here is you don't have much time when you start mixing the epoxy before it starts to harden, so I wanted to make sure I got it all applied and all the air bubbles out and rolled the corners and all that fun stuff before it started kicking off. So if you're considering using epoxy versus resin, I definitely recommend the epoxy over the polyester resin. Polyester, number one, is really smelly. This is not nearly as the same amount of uh, foul smell. And the other thing to note, too, is that its workability is similar to polyester. But I think because it starts to harden pretty fast, it makes life a lot easier. So definitely recommend the epoxy if you're considering that over resin. Now, if we we're going to talk about Kevlar, um, this 5-ounce Kevlar is just fantastic. I applied a thin coat of epoxy underneath it. This way it will give it something to stick. And then I applied more epoxy over the top of it. And it wet out really easy. Super easy. No problem. Super smooth. I rolled it. Got all the air pockets out. I'm just waiting for it to 
dry just a little bit more and then what I'll do is I'll go through and roll the corners just one more time before we call it good but this yellow trademark Kevlar look is just absolutely fantastic corners rolled real good no issues looks super smooth looks super strong super happy with how it came out once this dries we will go ahead and flip it over and we'll roll the corners again probably we'll have two layers of of uh, Kevlar over each side because we'll roll it over and then we'll taper it again so it, it all meets in the same area. Maybe do a little bit of light sanding just to make sure everything came out well. Yeah, but absolutely fantastic. I like it. So if you're considering Kevlar, definitely definitely do it. It's great. It's, but like I said, the only problem is it's kind of five times more expensive, but super strong. So that's going to do it for this episode. We've got the Kevlar applied to the transom on the first side. We're going to let this dry. And the next episode we'll flip it over. Apply the last coat of uh, Kevlar and epoxy. Um, yeah. And we'll get this thing back in the boat and start working on it some more. So I hope you liked the episode as always. Subscribe if you're not. Make sure you like the video if you thought it was helpful. Any comments, questions, leave them in the comments field below. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Until next time, take it easy and have a good one.